The combination of light and power provided by Almond Light Towers help to make the work you do that much easier. With proper setup, Almond Light Towers will be ready for you when you need them the most. After detaching the light tower from your towing vehicle or setting it in place using a crane, be sure to level the unit using the leveling screw jack on the tongue of the unit. Next, pull the outriggers to their fully deployed and locked position, again rotating and using the screw jacks to further level and stabilize the light tower. In order to safely run the light tower, routine inspection is required prior to use. First, open the access door on the unit. If this is the initial setup of a new unit, the containment tray drain cap will be in a plastic bag attached to the upper radiator hose. Take and screw it tightly into the containment tray drain found at the back of the unit. Returning to the control panel, if the main breaker is on, switch it to the off position. Locate the air filter and inspect it for dirt and debris, replacing if necessary. Inspect the oil level by accessing the dipstick and assessing whether the oil level is sufficient, adding oil as necessary. This should be done while the engine is cool. Check the radiator's coolant volume by removing the radiator cap and visually inspecting the fluid level and fluid reservoir. Again, be sure that the engine is cool at this time. On the control panel, turn the key or knob to the run position. Now we will use the hydraulic switch to check the light tower mast's telescoping system. Time to check the engine. Turn the key to the counterclockwise direction for 5 seconds. This allows the glow plugs to cycle, which causes the air and fuel mixture to properly combust in the cylinders. Newer models have replaced the traditional key and used this knob instead. With the glow plugs now ready, you may turn the key and hold it in the start position. When the unit has started and maintained full RPMs, you may turn on the main breaker. Turning on the main breaker allows power to travel to each individual light's breaker. Now, check the lights. Turn each light on by their individual switches, one by one. The lights will require three to five minutes to reach their full illumination. Assuming everything is performing properly, we will move to the shutdown process by turning off each light's breaker separately, then turning off the main breaker. Almond lights and capacitors are protected by the SLS, sequential lighting system, meaning that an operator could inadvertently shut down the units abnormally without harming the lights. Still, an operator should maintain the habit of turning the lights off individually before turning off the engine. Once again, lower the mast to its fully retracted position using the hydraulic activation switch. Turn the start key to the off position. Raise the screw jacks on the outriggers then swivel and move the jacks into towing position. Then, slide the outriggers to their fully stowed towing position. When the lights have cooled, fold the lamps down so that they face each other to protect them from road debris during towing. Do this by releasing the spring-loaded locking pin and re-engaging the locking pin in the swivel track when the light is in the proper position. Release the main turret locking pin and adjust it into towing position, then re-engage the locking pin. You have now performed the initial setup and systems check of the unit. The unit is ready to work for you. Proper setup and maintenance of Almond equipment assures its availability when you need it most. As always, Almond brings reliability, performance, and integrity since 1938.